Uh, so we'll go ahead and start the uh, the meeting and <coughs> hearing of the Northampton Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, uh, I'm David Bloomberg. With me is Spring Scallon, Sarah Northrup, and Bob Riddle as members, and Carolyn Mitchell is <laughs> providing support from the uh, Office of Planning and Sustainability. Um, we have uh, one item on the agenda. Uh, but before we get to that, we'll just ask if there's anybody here just for open public comment. So comments or questions to the board that do not relate to the application that's pending before us tonight. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have comment, public comment? Or, uh, yeah, public comment in regards to, I guess this is kind of the appeals process or to, to raise an issue with, for planning, for zoning. Was yeah, understand? although if it's a specific appeal, the process does not normally start with uh, a pr a coming to our board. Rather, there would be an application for an appeal filed oh, uh, I was, with why uh, I was the Office that. of Planning and Sustainability. What what uh, what is your name? Uh, Tom Sadowski. So this is regards to a uh, building permit that was issued on Tuesday evening uh, for 16 Mountain Street in Florence, and our primarily concern is, I mean, they filed it on Friday, it was not conformance, and then they refiled it, a totally different plan, um, on Tuesday evening, and they broke ground on Wednesday. And our, you know, most significant issue is the addition is larger than the actual house. Okay, and, and are you an abutter? Do you live yes. here? But what, what address do you live 18? Eight, number 18. What's the street? Uh, Mountain. Mountain Street. And certainly, you know, we've got more time, we can get the rest of the names well, there. Well, I think um, the question for Carolyn is yeah. what is the proper procedure for filing an appeal or, or a request? The, the, if there's a question about a building permit, wouldn't it right. be taken up with a building inspector? Yeah. We, we, yeah, we, we talked to them, you know, went in there um, on Monday and then again when they broke ground on Wednesday. And then he said that from his process, it all met conformance and that. You know, if I wanted to go through the process, and it was my understanding at that point that we come here because he he brought up he brought up this board, and I know from you know from my old neighborhood, uh, we went through this board quite a bit for. Right. I, I think he, he probably. Yeah. Where's Mountain Street? It's uh, New York Kingdom Field. Oh yeah, I know it. Yeah, um, off of Bridge. Uh, yeah, off the bridge road, road. So, so, the, so that old neighborhood that abuts fish. It's the, the, yeah, that yeah. all, you know, the, the streets, yeah. you know, right. the neighborhood that so abuts yeah. Fitzgerald Lake Conservation Area. Yeah, right. yeah. I suspected sorry, when I he said you were talking about Waynesburg. Right. I oh, sorry. <laughs> wrong town. I suspected <laughs> when he said it, you take it up with the Zoning Board of Appeals, he meant he was informally referring to the fact that there is a procedure if, if an abutter uh, has a concern about whether a building permit was issued correctly or incorrectly. Okay. And that is a formal appeal process to this board. Right. But it would start with a, a paper. How does it start, Carolyn? Yeah, so um, you're then, so what you're, what, uh, just want to make sure I understand. Yeah. Um, a building permit was issued on a property and you're con um, contesting the fact that the um, information that was provided was either accurate or correct or that, um, it is accurate. It I is guess. accurate. So I, I guess, <clears throat> I mean, I thought it was kind of similar to, it's like it could be accurate in terms of the scope, similar to that you, you know, you have a non-conformance and even though it's a non-conformance, you can get appeals process in order to get it through the city, similar to, I thought there was an appeals process if it was made to conform. Um, that well, if it doesn't meet the character of think, the neighborhood when you're talking about right it, i think you're referring to a, excuse me a couple different things one is if the home improvement or addition is something that is being made to a house that currently does not conform right then that then the question becomes is that an expansion or alteration of a pre-existing non-conforming structure or use right and if that is the case mm -hmm. or that is the question then uh, the normally the building inspector would make a determination when the application is made for a building permit or a zoning permit. Mm -hmm. The building inspector would make a determination that because this is an alteration or expansion of a pre-existing non-conforming structure or use, right. in some cases, yep. you have to apply to the this board 
meaning the, the, the homeowner who wants to do right. an improvement, yes. to this board for something called a finding. And yep. in that case, we have to determine after reviewing <coughs> the application for the finding uh -huh. that, um, that, the, uh, that the proposed expansion or alteration is, is not substantially more detrimental to the characteristics of the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. In this case, though, in the case you're talking about, it sounds like what happened was the building inspector, when he reviewed the application of the zoning permit application or the request for a building permit right. must have determined that a finding was not necessary. Otherwise, he wouldn't have issued a building permit. In other words, he only issues a building permit if he reviews the application and determines that what the, what the homeowner wants to do is allowed as of right without any other special permit or site plan yes. approval or yes. finding. Right. So he must have done that. Yep. And then it sounds like you have a concern that, um, that he, 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 he did that either in disagree, error yeah. or that you disagree with the building inspector's decision that that uh, well, yeah I guess it wasn't necessarily disagree it was my understanding is that I, I thought there was still kind of a level of gray area where within that um, I guess that policy I mean the only thing that, that I guess I would kind of you know in terms of the percentage in terms of how the percentages work uh, for the area when you're talking about the, the additions, um, that it, it, my understanding, or at least how he was saying it, is that each time you add an addition, that now the total of the house is that, so thereby you could keep on adding on and adding on and adding on. Because on that house, you know, on that property, it was originally just the house, and then they added on Right, but, way it added on but for garage. example, if it's a large enough piece of land, even with those additions, the building inspector may have determined that that the the maximum lot coverage yep. ratio is still satisfied even with the addition, or and that no setback required minimum setbacks from the sideline or rear or front. I don't know what he did, but 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 he does. He certainly takes a look at all of those measurements when he makes his decision yeah, okay. as to whether to issue the building permit. Right. I'm not trying to stifle anything. Oh, I'm no, just no, trying no, to no, think no, no, it yeah, through yeah, you guys are yeah. and, and also perhaps provide additional information about what you would do next um, if you had a, a question or a doubt or a concern about that. Yeah, the, I mean, what the, I can do is just, so one is if you do think that he made, a, he erred, right. then there is a formal application process okay. and there's a public hearing. So you right. can't, you don't just appear in front of the board, but there's a process for that. The other thing is, after the board is done, if you want to wait around, I can walk up back to my office and pull up the permit and uh, go over some of the, clarify some of the questions you have if you right. want to do that. That's yeah, no, I mean, he certainly, you know, clarified it. Yeah. I, I guess it was more considering that, you know, I was trying to think of even within Florence, you know, downtown, well, and certainly in that neighborhood where you've had such a large addition, even though the lot is kind of small, because now it's like, Three quarters of the lot will be, you know, property. Yeah. I think the the thing is, if the lot wasn't 125 feet deep, the 35 foot addition, which is longer than the 32 foot house, right. would not would not be permissible. Say if it was a 100 foot lot, then it would bring it back to right. where it's probably only a 15 or 18 foot uh, addition. Right. But right, right now, this yeah, the, odd this odd looking. <laughs> addition. Right, and, and, and just your, your name, sir, please. Joe Sadlowski, I'm the owner of the property okay. at 18 Mountain Street. 18 Mountain, thank you. And um, the, the, you know, uh, it, it makes sense to me, that, first of all, you know, we are here for public comment and, and, and we want, and we definitely want to help point you in oh, the direction yeah, 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 you go. Right. We're yeah, really happy to do that. For, uh, it's just we have no application pending yeah. in front right. of us or no numbers or figures, but yeah. I'll, I'll repeat that one, that is certainly something the building inspector looks at before he issues the building permit, and so it'll be interesting to see. And two, you know, if there if there was an error, then there's a procedure. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but secondly, I think Carolyn, maybe it makes more sense during business hours, Carolyn, but that's up to you. Um, is Carolyn, who is, is the city planner with yeah. the Office of Planning and Sustainability, uh -huh. is willing uh, at some point to take a look at the permit file to maybe take a closer look at what these what the dimensional information was that was provided. 
you start with what zoning district are you in? Is the house in? Right. What are the minimum lot sizes and setback <coughs> requirements, height, and other dimensional mm -hmm. restrictions? And how much room is on this lot with the current house? And how much room will there be after this addition is made? And after the addition is made, are all of those dimensional restrictions still satisfied? Right. If so, the building inspector acted within his correctly within his authority. If not, right. there is a procedure for uh, for questioning or appealing or requesting a what a redetermination or an appeal. Yeah, it would be an appeal. It would be an appeal it's based on the claim that yeah. he made to this board, right. based on the fact the claim that he made a mistake. Right. Um, uh, yeah, and I guess my, maybe mine is like kind of a larger, you know, maybe it's more, you know, part of Wayne's camp in terms of the planning for the city where it's like, how much infill do we want, right, you right. know, within, yeah, I mean, if, if you're within a country, because clearly it's different than Northampton, but it's kind of like, wow, you want to do that here versus right, right. I mean, historically, if, 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 you, yeah. if you live there, you wouldn't, you know, right. yeah, if, care. But, but if the concern mm -hmm. is just aesthetic, yep. um, but otherwise, the dimensional restrictions are fully satisfied even with this addition. Uh -huh. um, that's a larger issue that is sort of beyond us. In other words, it goes to, well, then if there's a concern with what the zoning ordinance allows, ultimately it's the city council that, that authorizes or approves changes to the zoning ordinance. Right. Um, but I think I hear what you're saying. Infill is a concept that makes a lot of sense in the down in the central Northampton zoning districts, uh, maybe even the center of Florence, but um, but on Mountain View, um, I mean that that's the you know a question you know in the infinite wisdom of the city council, um, it, does this warrant a revision to the zoning ordinance, which is not something they do very often, right? Because it, it, the whole point is to have some stable set of rules, but but that would be. A, a next level question mm -hmm. that actually would not involve us if it's just a question of wait a minute this seems like too much infill for this part of town right does that make sense yeah no, yes, i think yes. that's that's more what i'm going after <laughs> I would, I, my my proposal would be i'd like to see it probably no greater than the the, the addition being only half of what the length of the house is right which is still you know if you got a 32 foot house you got a 16 foot right. addition right i mean all the houses in the neighborhood are all, they're not these big monsters, so right. I mean, when you do throw something that like that size out there, it destroys the integrity and character of the neighborhood. And I think the city of Northampton uh, would be smart in trying to preserve some of this right. integrity. That, that would be a, a discussion, I think, to perhaps have with your city councilor in, in your mm -hmm. zoning district, mm -hmm. in your district, but for your ward. But but the um, because that's the level we're talking about there. Right. I, I will say that. The, the whole point or, or tension in the zoning, any zoning ordinance, mm -hmm. is between this public policy that favors letting people generally do what they want with their own land mm -hmm. versus the neighbors and everyone else who doesn't own that one piece of property and the fact that, you know, you know, it's not a surprise that you're going to have an opinion as well. But right. and, and then it's a balancing act from zoning within each zoning district what you know seems most appropriate based on urban planning concepts and design principles and and everything else that you know the experts like Carolyn um, are are trained in. Um, but but does that make sense? I think I think the yeah, first thing you totally. see find out is does it look like it was a mistake? If so, there's a procedure. It'll be an appeal to this board. Right. And if the answer is no, the the, the, the building inspector did the math correctly, and yeah, this actually is allowed. Then it's that larger design and aesthetic question that, does that make sense, city council? City councilor anyway, a conversation with your city councilor saying, look, is this really what we want in our neighborhood? And and if not, is is that something your city councilor can somehow look into further or- And talk to the planning board. And talk to right. mm -hmm. the plan. will it be planning board, or it be it Wayne and Carolyn? It is certainly worth discussion. Yeah. These things are, you know, they're always trying to make it better. And there's some things that have been uh, sections of the ordinance that are somewhat experimental. Let's see how this works, and you know it changes with the times and with opinion and. Right, and, um, and one person's you know monstrosity is is another person's perfect home improvement. You know. Right. Yeah, and, cer and certainly, right. yeah, I have no problem with that. It's just yeah, I know how infill you know occurs in terms of plant you know in terms of development within. 
areas, and it's like, I guess the question is how much do you want to preserve like the feel of once you get into North yeah. Farms Road in that area, because as it is right now, it's like you buy any of those lots and just, yeah. 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 300 foot <laughs> lot and put a 280 foot addition on it. <laughs> right. Well, that, that's the question. And I know periodically there are public forums for these sorts of questions and discussions. Uh, you know. I, I, yeah, I think I went to the last time like three or four years ago or, or at some point when yeah. you guys got it. it but, but I think that makes, does yeah. that make sense for you? Yeah, that makes sense. Check, check to see if there's an error. Yeah. If so, there's a procedure. If not, right. it's the larger question that you might want to take up with with the city councilor, I don't know if Wayne or somebody in your office, you know. Yeah, yeah I mean the councilor would probably call us and we. Yeah. Have <laughs> I'll just call Wayne. <laughs> Who is your city councilor? Uh, Alyssa Klein. Alyssa Klein. So, Alyssa Klein. Yeah. So, yeah. so she could. I'm sure she. And could I guess my my only question would be in regards. I mean, Carolyn, maybe you could clarify this in terms of the percentages that you can build into. You know the. What's the number? The thirty. Well, the thirty percent had to do with like a, adding a garage or something to the facades of a uh, facades of a building. Okay. I couldn't yeah, that, see I think it. that district is water supply protection, so that you can only cover forty uh, percent of the property, and it's only allowed for single-family homes. So it's not really an infill district at all, but it's really sort of probably someone's lifestyle changes, they need a little bit more space and sort of designing a single family home to meet their needs right. and within the open space requirements and the step backs. I think this this is right on the edge and it's actually on a different district. It's you are high. Oh, maybe it's rural residential. I yeah. have to look at the property. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. No. But but we can Yeah, I mean it, it, yeah, I guess Right, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thank you guys so much. Okay, sure, very much. Sure. Thanks for coming in. Yeah, I'm sorry for. <laughs> no, it's okay. No, it's okay. It's, but yeah, that, that is. A public <laughs> but but the infill is 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 the big question. Is like how much rural do we want to have? How much right. infill do we want? That's the larger. Out, outside of downtown or the area. Right. You know. Well, and again, infill isn't. It, the term infill is more about adding new homes or new units, okay, and creating density, as opposed to just adding on to your house. Right. Uh, presumably, uh, this wasn't turned into a two-family. An infill, yes. as Carolyn said, refers to increasing. When she means density, she means the number of dwelling units, the number okay. of dwelling units on a property. Yep. And presumably, that didn't happen. Right. You're, you're sort of using it in the sense of. Visually, it's in fulfill. It's a, it's yes. a sizable addition, mm -hmm. yeah. but that is a distinction. That, that it, it's not technically in fill if they haven't added another legal dwelling unit. Right. Okay. okay. Yeah, the only additions that a couple other people made that were big additions. Instead of going out, they went up. So instead of a cape, they took the roof off and went up another star. Right and double the size. Right, although again, there are height permitted height, height yeah, restrictions. Yeah, as long as you stay within the 30 feet. Right. Height limit. Right. Mm -hmm. so, all right, so. okay. Well, good luck. Yeah, Maybe we'll see you again if, if, he made right. if you think he made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll just, I'll stop by and see your office, Carolyn. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Have a good Thank night. All right, see you. Bye-bye. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> Uh, so we'll, we'll move on to the item that is on the agenda, is it? I know, it's our first public comment. It's, it's a good one. Yeah. Um, because it touched on larger issues. So, um, but I'm sorry for the delay. Um, we, no we will go ahead and, and hear the application for a signed special permit for larger blades signed by the trustees, quote unquote, at 100 Main Street, Florence, map ID 23A-68. Notice of this hearing was published on October 26th and November 2nd, 2017. And we'll go ahead and hear a brief explanation by the applicant or the representative of the applicant, and then we'll ask questions. It looks like there's no one else here who might want to comment on this. Uh, but if you could please just give your name. No, it's okay, please name Before it. Before you step, yeah. I'm a member of the trustees. Oh, so, so you're gonna refuse or? I, she can vote Maureen. Okay, so the three voting will be. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, will be Maureen. And, and I assume you don't have a concern if Bob stays up here, he just won't be voting. And there's no one else to ask about oh, any concerns with it. Thank you. Uh, Family members. <laughs> so, um, so that means the three voting, the three voters will be the three of us. Okay. And your name and address, please. Caitlin Davis. Mm -hmm. Am I the 
which are you? Uh, what is your title? Are you with? I'm the executive assistant for the West region of the trustees. Okay, we're so a, would that we're just be office Yeah. Office okay. address is fine. Oh yeah, so 100 Main Street in Florence. In Florence. Okay. Okay, and um, you have an application for a sign. Yes. So we. So a little background. We um, we actually moved to Florence in March. We were previously in Holyoke. And we mainly moved because of the location. We wanted better visibility. And um, so we're a statewide land trust. Uh, we have over 100 properties that we preserve and protect across the state. And we wanted to be located between Northampton and Florence because of the location, the visibility. It's nearby where we have certain properties along Route 9. And we would like a sign because we are new to the area still. So we, won't, we haven't been there for a year yet. Um, we're right on Main Street. We're right near the diner and the Freckled Fox and the post office. And we, since we've moved, we've gotten a lot of people off the street coming in wondering who we are. Um, and I think it would be great if we had a sign outside who we are. Um, when in our office, we do have, um, we kind of have decals along the walls and the windows as well. And we also have members that come in saying how great it is that we've moved to the neighborhood and they weren't aware that we had moved or that we had an office here. Um, and, you know, I keep saying, well, we're working on getting a sign, so I would like to make that <laughs> true. Okay. Um, and we have, so far, we, we've been approved for one sign in the front of our office, off of Main Street, right in the front. So the second sign, and that's, um, it's the, it would be the same exact sign, the same size, um, a hanging bladed sign. And then the second one will be off of, I believe it's Maple Ave. Yes, just right off the, right near the, um, just a little bit past the crosswalk. Um, so that's for the, the second sign, where we would like to have that. Okay. And, um, and the, it's because it's a second sign, Carolyn, that? Um, I thought it also projected uh, beyond the um, allowance. Um, let me just double check. I think that's what I had in my comments. I'm sorry. Um, 24 inch. Yeah. So it's um, you're allowed one. Um, you're also allowed one uh, blade sign. So it. Um, only be one blade sign yeah. per business. Right. Um, so, and, I can't and then more than, than 20. Three. Right, right. Yeah. So. so it's a 24 inch um, sign. I'm looking at the picture. Mm -hmm. 24 inches horizontal measurement, a little bit more vertically. Right. Um, uh, but it's on this arm, so it ends up sticking out a little more than 24 right. inches. Right. It projects out a little bit more. So one of these. Um, is currently on Maple Street, and you're talking about putting another one on the because it's a corner lot. Right. The second one we want is the Maple Street I see. one. Yeah. And the first one is not up yet. No, not yet. They're that's going to go above the front door. I can actually show you. Um, this isn't the exact location. It's okay if I please, please. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that's kind of the idea of the first. The first side. And they're identical. Yes. They will be identical. They'll be identical. And the second one would go along the main Maple Street facade. Yes, towards the intersection. Mm -hmm. And it's is it going to be illuminated? No. No, they won't. We're not that fancy. And it's not going to block any sight line for either drivers or pedestrians or no it won't be that that far out did you yeah, consider won't. putting one flat on that green sign panel that's built we we did because we our neighbors they have um their law office they're new as well that's what they have mm -hmm. and originally that's what we had thought um but our vice president would like a a bladed sign that kind of sticks out so that when people are driving or walking by mm. it's more visible than kind of having a flat sign and having to turn. And 
and this, it's going to be more, the two signs will be more than 20 feet away from each other on the frontage. Oh, yeah, they, the won't, be, they won't be near each other. And, it, and your business is on the first floor? Yes. And will it, is it projecting more than three feet from the facade? Is that one of the, no? No. no. Okay, good. No. And yeah. neither one on its own would be on the facade, so that right where, where, because it's less than six square feet. But it's because there were two? Um, I think the original interpretation, when it was submitted, and maybe it's been clarified since then, so it is more than two feet from the edge of the walls. So it's two feet plus two and a half feet. So um, I, um, on the review, I think when it first came in, and maybe it's um, been modified since then, I'm not sure. Um, I think it was because it was slightly larger than the minimum allowed. Um, and um, that it projected more than two feet from the edge. But this is, can't project more than three feet from the facade. Sorry. As, as a uh, under 7.4. sort of, you know, filed it away in my brain that it was one thing, <laughs> but it also, um, uh, so there is one per business, um, right. although for wall signs we also allow two if it's a corner um, building. Um, so, um, this would be an extra one, but consistent with wall signs, the number of wall signs okay. allowed. But everything else is satisfied. You're on the first floor. It's not more than three feet from the facade. Won't exceed six square feet in total surface area. Won't be more than two inches wide. And the bottom will be at least nine feet hot up from the ground. And the top of the sign will be less than 15 feet. It will not be internally lit. And it's being located on the same lot as the structure being advertised. In other words, on your own office mm -hmm. facade. Um, and, and no lighting. Any any question? I have no concerns. I'm just questioning. I'm just thinking aloud about. I know it's not a very deep sidewalk there, and thinking about the PBTA bus comes you know around the corner, I believe. So just wondering, make sure we're clear there because it is a pretty shallow sidewalk coming from Maple onto Nunatuck. It is for. I mean, onto Maple. It is for larger vehicles. It is what? Why did I? Well, well, I'm just agreeing. Yeah, it is when they, you mean like when they're trying to turn? It's a tight corner. Yeah. It is. Yeah, there actually was a car accident right next to our office yeah. the other day. Um, but I think from where we are, I think it'll be okay. I think there'll be enough room. Well, I'm just trying to think aloud if there's any issue right. in visibility or anything and having a uh, project inside a blade sign. Well, no concerns from any other city departments, correct? Yeah, but you didn't have any. Yeah. Okay. So. And the, um, Sarah's point about that building was designed to use that green panel for signage, mm -hmm. you know, um, would this, should they at some point choose to take advantage of that? They need to come back because they'll right. Oh, well, no, because the blade sign uh, um, allowance is in addition to a wall sign. A wall sign allowance. So, okay, so what, but one blade so Yeah. And a good rationale for allowing the second is that they're on a corner, they would be allowed two wall signs. Right. And yeah, so they're two different facades, and you might have, yeah. you know, different orientation for pedestrians and vehicles. Okay. Uh, any comments? No. Okay. I think that the, if a truck tried to hit the sign, it would have to 
take over a lot of sidewalk. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's not hanging near the curves. Um, but it's a good question. So, so it is. So, so um, I guess. It, I yeah. move to close the public hearing. Second. That would be so. Yeah. All in favor, unanimous. And then a okay. motion on the. Do you have paperwork? A motion on the. Sure. No. Uh, yeah. I move that we approve the application for an additional lane sign at 100 Main Street for the trustees as presented. All in favor? Yes, you're all set. All right, great, thank you. Thanks. So the next steps, will I receive something? Yeah, so we send out a notice that a decision has been issued. There's a 20 day appeal period, and then after that appeal period, you can pick up a certified copy of the decision from the city clerk's office okay. and record that with the registry of deeds and take that to the building department for uh, approval of the actual sign permit. All right, good. All right, thank you so much. So we'll just, I guess, if there, I don't see any minutes, so just motion to adjourn. Uh, any other business? Or? Okay. Okay. I'll put them on the next one. So your next meeting won't be until December. You're not going to meet on Thanksgiving. Uh, let's check that date. Uh, I mean, we don't know yet.